One of the things I did right after the book was finished is I made a list of topics that I touched on in the book but didn't really get to pursue in the kind of detail I would like having more time. And the, the research model that the humanities has adopted um, kept coming to the top of that list, um, mostly because it seems to me ridiculous. Um, and the, the, the statistic that really underscores that is, is this, it's cited in a book by Deborah Rohde called In Pursuit of Knowledge. She cites a study that says only 2% of all published articles and monographs in the humanities are ever cited. 98% go unsighted. This means that we're an army of producers of scholarship, but nobody's reading what we're producing. And that, to me, seems like an economy that's absolutely fractured. But that's the heart and soul of the research model as we practice it. Administrators expect us to continue producing, um, and so we do. And people who are untenured and people who are in graduate school don't have any choice but to play by those rules. But no one seems to be stopping and thinking, well, is an exchange of ideas really happening here? Are people actually reading what's being written? The answer is no. They continue to expect their faculty to publish more and more scholarship, um, regardless of whether anyone is reading. Uh, that just seems to be crazy. And it's, it, I, think, I don't think there's an institutional or an organizational solution to that problem. the only solution to the problem of the broken research model that we all have to operate with, and we all recognize that it's broken. The only solution is just to ridicule it until someone starts to pay attention. Administrators are the ones who are saying, we require a book for tenure. Um, Mark Bauerlein recently came up with, had, wrote a working paper called Professors on the Production Line, Students on Their Own. In which he actually asks a really legitimate question. He says towards the end of his essay, um, what university administrator is going to say, um, come to our college, we no longer require our assistant professors to write books. It's as though we've painted ourselves into a corner. The entire institution of higher learning, administrators and professors as well, where administrators are setting these research bars extremely high, and professors have no choice but to comply with them. And, and the result is, this crazy model where a ton of scholarship is being produced but none of it's being read. Um, and I don't, I don't know how we can fix that problem except by pointing out to administrators how nonsensical it is. Um, one of the most useful phrases that I've encountered to talk about this problem is John Guillory's use of the phrase scholarship expressed as publication. He says that's the real problem. It's not the scholarship is bad. It's the, the fact that there's this mandate that scholarship be expressed as publication that jams up the works. I actually think the best way for an exchange of ideas to take place is at conferences. Um, I don't see why the end point of the development of a graduate student or a professor's idea shouldn't be a conference presentation where there's a live audience, even if it's only 20 or 30 people, and there's a conversation and there's possibilities for face-to-face -face conversations after the conferences. I don't, I think I would actually want to reify conference, conferences as the site at which real knowledge can be shared, because it's not happening in the venue of monographs and articles, because nobody reads them. So the whole, the whole machinery of scholarly publication is, is in perpetual slow motion, whereas conferences at least are, are live and they're immediate, and they just seems to be, seems to me to be a much more lively way to to exchange information and ideas.